right. We are so excited today uh, because we have another, 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 another great interview. Now, this young man, I'm just going to say this young man, I met him at the Stella Awards at, in the food court. You know, right after one of the the the, the major events, right. and everybody was hungry, and and I saw I wanted that's Kid Wonderboy, right? That's Kid Wonderboy, and I I said my 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 I got so excited, didn't even get my food, man. You was being country. I was getting country. You from San Diego, California. Well, well you you know I I try my I best. Expect yeah, better from yeah, you. Yeah, I, I try my best not to get you know. Uh, uh, starstruck, starstruck, but because you know we we around stars a lot. Yes, but it was Keith Wonderboy. So your behavior was unacceptable. Uh, yeah, yeah, but you know I got myself together. Okay, you know we we, we actually made the contact, okay. and and he actually gave me a a, re, a, a reach out. Yes, uh, Amen. So could yes. you introduce this young man right here, and we're gonna start this interview. This young man hails from the New York area. Well, he is what I call a flat foot singer, and y'all know I don't like fluff. I like flat foot. Hard nose, stomping, for Jesus kind of thing. Singing, yes. yes, yes, this this gentleman can do it better than than most. Most, yes, yes. He's world renowned. Yes, yes. He's a anointed and appointed. Yeah, a hooker messiah minstrel. Yes, for the end times that with which we live in. Amen. None of <laughs> keep Wonder Boy Johnson. Welcome to the Morning Wake Up Show. Uh, how you Good doing, morning, my brother? fellas? Uh, man, man, man uh, uh, we we've been kind of waiting for this interview because uh, uh, we we love the way you just take everybody to church, don't matter where where you at. Yeah, you know, I felt like in the food court, if they would have played music, you would have sung them happy and had the people in the restaurant just going in throwing their throwing their food. <laughs> well, man, that's what I was raised raised to do. Man, I'm a, a New York church boy, man. So. I just, it don't matter. God is the reason why you're here. So I just give him the praise. So, so let me, let's just get right down into yes. it. Uh, uh, Keith, I wouldn't, I've always wanted to ask you this question. Where did the Wonder Boy come from? Cause you know, every time I heard it, I was like, did it come from Wonder Bread or, or did, did we lose him? Keith, come on back. There you go. Praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah. You know, tell us where the Wonder Boy came from. Well, it came from, I came from a generation. I started singing. With, with the group when I was five years old. My dad brought me into the group. It was a family group with my dad and my uncles, and they had been singing for years. And then the, they brought me an addition as a group. And during that time, this was, whew, I don't want to date myself, but I got to tell you, this was <laughs> 77. Okay. And during that era, it was in not just, yeah, in quartet and R&B, it was real popular for them to have a little a little fella, the lead singer, and they would mm-hmm. call him Little and whatever their first name would be. Uh-huh. So in, in quartet, you know, it could be Little Anthony or Little whatever. And then, uh, so we was opening, I was five years old then, and we had a chance to open the Mighty Clouds of Joy came wow. to New York, and we was opening to them. And Johnny Johnny Martin, who was the manager of the Mighty Clouds of Joy, and Joe Lagarde, the lead singer, they took a liking to me. Mm-hmm. So they both was calling me their godson. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Johnny Martin, being the businessman that he is, he took over. That's my godson. Then he came to my dad. He said, well, we, we need to do something different with him. We don't want to call him Little Keith. So they sat there for a little while. And before the end of the day, he was like, yo, let's call him the Little Wonder Boy. Mm -hmm. So from that time then, I was known throughout the city in the Tribeca area like as the Little Wonder Boy. So I grew up Mm -hmm. all during my time as the Little Wonder Boy. Mm -hmm. Nobody never really knew my name. Right. Mm -hmm. So... I graduated from high school and I went away to college and I stopped singing. So after I graduated, it came back and was just, you know, singing with the group. I wasn't really no serious with it. And then uh, my dad, me and my dad had a conversation and I took over 
he had passed the baton to me, and mm -hmm. I took over the group. Mm -hmm. So right then, I made some changes. So we took a little mock, a mock picture and put Keith Johnson in, in the spiritual voices instead of the Wonder Boy in the spiritual voices. So, man, my dad, being the manager and the businessman and that he is, my dad had a fit. The terminology that we use now, branding. Mm -hmm. Yes. He was always into that. So he was like, man, I don't put too much time, effort, blood, right. sweat, and tears into the little Wonder Boy. You're going to have to find a way to put that in there. I don't care. So it gave me a little time. Then I came up with Keith Wonder Boy Johnson. And the rest is history. So, so let me ask you this question. You know, just in the branding, ha have you have you name branded, uh, uh, copywritten, and 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 copywritten uh the wonder boy keith wonder boy oh yeah <laughs> okay uh, uh, all right because if not we're gonna get we're gonna get on the uh horn today and, and get that all done because we don't want nobody coming out there and saying my name is keith wonder boy oh he, he's he's hard to come behind and i have a question yeah how did you transition yeah. into the harlem's boys choir because people don't know that you were in there many people yeah well that was my parents more so, now my dad was strictly quartet. Mm -hmm. All my quartet roots, everything, they come from my dad. But he was also the type of person, he wanted to expose me to any and everything. Mm -hmm. And then the other part, that came from my mom. My mom, see, that's a strange story. My mother and my father is from the same little city in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. Summer, summer to South Carolina, they got one stoplight, and that, that turned that's turned that turned into a cautious light at midnight. Right. <laughs> wow. So, but you would never know. You could sit down and talk to both of them. You would never know. And they always was the type to expose me to any and everything. Mm -hmm. And it was it was basically to you know uh, teach me discipline on all kind of music mm -hmm. and atmospheres. Mm -hmm. So I went to junior high school. I went to the, the gifted and art school uh, in junior high school. So I was singing Mozart and, you know, everything. Then, I, you know, I've I always been a jokester and clown. I'll be back there clowning. It wasn't too many of us in, mm -hmm. in that school. Mm -hmm. So the ones that, you know, I did know, I would be like, well, you go to church? <laughs> and then they be like, "Yeah." I said, "Wouldn't that be nice?" The Beethoven, you'd be like, "Oh, oh hallelujah!" <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so I used to, I used to always play around mm -hmm. like that. <laughs> so let me ask you this question: You said that uh, uh, you you went to college. Where did you go to college? And let's talk about some of your college um, uh, energy and, and opportunities while you was at college. Because he wasn't in church. Probably. Right. Well, yeah, I, I'm I'm not gonna tell no unrealistic story. I drifted <laughs> and oh boy did I drift. Yeah. And wait, wait. Did you uh, pledge? Did you pledge? No, nah, I didn't okay. pledge. My school was the tight. Well, I can tell you. First, I went to the University of Maryland Eastern Shore. Okay, okay. yes, they have a good track team. Yes. Yeah. So it's the H S B U C H S B C so right. uh so um, I just wanted to get out of New York. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why I tell people now. Yeah. My mother told me, don't tell it that, you know, don't say people. But I, I encourage people. Those parents, man, they working hard for their money. Right. And sometimes they got their kid down there, man. They is blowing that money. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. They not thinking about no school. And they ain't realizing how much sacrifice that parent is then I'm like, no, you don't need to do that. If you if that ain't for your child, you go and send them to a trade school or, right. or, or something else, or let them get a job or whatever. Mm -hmm. Cause some of you know that ain't for them. But yeah, I went down there and when I was a freshman, to be a, the freshman when I started, Sharice Nelson, who is Richard Small uh, no Sharice Nelson. Oh, she was one of uh Richard Smallwood's main background singers and lead singers yep. uh, from D.C. She was a freshman there with me. Wow. So, I, But I was more so quiet. So then when our first semester started, they, they you know, advertised auditions for a play. 
and they did a play on school. So that's when I met her. But I wasn't in the play. I just went to see the play. So then I, I didn't do no singing. And then uh, my friend that was in my dorm, he heard me singing or something. So they, they put up a little for for one of the cabarets for the cappers or whatever. Mm. They they put together what what you call them? A cover band. Okay. And man, mm-hmm. it was funny, Doc. We was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We 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 we, we believe you. <laughs> did, 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 did you try to go to church with them? <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, I was I was churchy R and B. We was singing like God material tease me tonight. Right. Uh oh yeah, um Tony, 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 it never rains in yeah. Southern California. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's and good. And man, stuff. I was church. I was actually playing the bass and singing. Uh-huh. And I was, I was church and I was, oh, baby. <laughs> and you was killing oh, them. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> but most of y'all do. Yeah. Most of the RB singers are from the church. Yeah. I'm telling you, I was killing that thing, dude. And we was doing Tony, Tony, feels good. Right. Yeah. Boy, I was. I was stomping on that thing like it was a quartet drive. <laughs> well, well, you know, Tony, 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 they they, they, they called you from yeah. the Bay Area. Yeah. yeah. And so, so, yeah. so you so know, man, when when they when they did that song and they said, they said, they said, feel it in my hands and feel it in my feet. Yeah. Well, we already knew that, that was a church, church term. Yeah. 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 So, so then as it went on, then I got to like my sophomore year and I was, it was a Saturday and I would come, I was walking home from lunch. And I looked across the parking lot and I seen a bus in the parking lot. And I'm looking, I'm like, I know that bus. And I went walking over there and there was a promoter by the name of Lonnie Parker from Baltimore, Maryland. But when he would have his shows on Sunday in Baltimore, some Saturdays he would bring his shows to the Eastern Shore and rent out my college. Mm -hmm. So when I walked in there, it was Willie Neal. He had Willie Neal Johnson here that night. Wow. wow. So I came to the show, and, you know, I, I had already knew them, so I came to the show. They were like, what you doing out here? I was like, I'm go, I go to school here. So then I saw that. Then I didn't do no more singing. And then John P. Key came for homecoming. Yes, oh, sir. Okay. Black college experience. Right? Black college so, experience. Yeah, he was hot on that. So I don't know. If something went wrong, but he sung anyway. You know, he getting no moves and he started he started man then he got to that point where he got he started giving he was giving away money yep and he was just randomly picking people so i was like you know i really ain't i didn't want to sing or nothing but i just like man i got i was like man i want some of that money (laughs) 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 so so i went closer to the stage right as soon as I got by the stage, he started singing "He'll Welcome Me." Yes, mm-hmm. that's you know that old yeah, church song. Yeah, "He'll Welcome Me." So then he made a reference, like, "Boy, y'all don't know nothing about no quartet." So me sitting in the audience, I really wanted that one of them hundred that he was passing out. <laughs> right, right. So I was like, I, I know something about it. Right. He was like, man, get out of here. Ain't no student here. No nothing about no quartet. Oh. I was like, give, give me the mic. Right. So <laughs> so then I took the mic and started singing. And wiped him out. And and, and started leading the songs. And I remember specifically, because we, we, we're actually friends now, uh, Isaac Korea and Lowell Pye mm-hmm. was looking at me like, what did you do? Then I was like, okay, not only do I know something about this welcome me, Y'all backed me up, and then I started court tenting for real, and they was right on me. So, like, the, the students that was there was looking like, <laughs> and then I gave them the mic and just disappeared back into the crowd. Once I, I didn't get one of them hunters. Right. Like, He's like, he, 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 he like, he said, you was a ringer, and we ain't going to give you a hundred because obviously you already yeah, have right. a skill set that's going to pay you anyway. <laughs> Now, yep. now, now, did Cherie sing a lot there? Because she was a background singer for Yolanda, too. Yeah. She sung. The you know, only time I heard her sing was, you know, uh, at in the play. Oh, got you. So you got to remember now, we 18, 19. Mm-hmm. So you know, how, you know how young kids at that church kids do. Now, when Thursday, I think the show opened on Thursday. Mm-hmm. 
uh, 18th, like was that Thursday. So she on B. It was one of those, the guy that wrote the play, it was one of those, you know, how similar to like style how Tyler Perry be. One mm-hmm. part, you be, it be on B. Right. And then, you know, to get near the end, somebody in the, they have a church scene oh, in the yeah. church. <laughs> so, like Thursday and Friday, when it was just college students, she was on being that thing. So she wasn't really. But Saturday, when her family came, Uh-oh. you know, my parents and all, man, she church, she turned that thing on. I was like, that girl knows something. <laughs> and, <laughs> I was like, she knows something. <laughs> then I did a little research and I found out, you know, her family group, they, they did a recording. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, and then it just happened to be my godfather in Baltimore, his group was on the same record label. So, we, you know, after that, we used to talk. Right. And so when I would see her in school, I'd be like, and then I never sung in school until my senior year. Uh, but let me let me ask this before you get to your <laughs> senior year. Now, how long did you and her date? <laughs> dirty. <laughs> we did not date. Yeah, he is dirty. Yeah. <laughs> we did date. Well, you... I can't lie now. I'm a, I'm, don't get me wrong. I am a quartet man. <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with my eyes. Right. Now. He just ain't going to touch everything. Yeah, you know, Sharice was uh, she was pretty she she was a pretty young lady, but I had an image thing. You know what I'm saying? I was already during that point. I had grew up as like a local kind of local star, mm-hmm. so I had knew I had already had like an image thing in mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. So I just couldn't we I couldn't do it because we couldn't be walking around like the letter ten like the, the number ten. <laughs> Right. So, cause Cherie, she tall. She's tall. She way t- she way tall. <laughs> so we, I'm like, we gonna we gonna be we gonna be friends. We gonna be brother and sister. She said, she gonna, said another gonna be my sister. Right. Yeah. yeah. Now the HBCU thing is a big thing because I went to um, Grambling in Pine Bluff, Arkansas, and you know, right. and we all were church kids. But when we get yeah. to those black college campuses and all those homecoming dances and concerts and events. So I understand. Yeah. So I, I can tell you, you man, you really get to, you know, that's why I, I tell parents all the time when you, you, these is the first guys that I know. Granted, I, I got to make up a special award for them because they were <laughs> four guys that was part of the in crew. Mm-hmm. But we watched, we graduated on time. Wow. We mm-hmm. wasn't professional students. Yeah. We graduated from on time and we knew everybody. And we graduated with an actually degree. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I I we grad, I graduated with a bachelor of science. Yes. Me and my other my best friend and the other two guys, they had they they uh well of all of us had bachelor of science. So cause that year it was it had got into a fact where you was having a lot of professional students. Yeah. I'm talking about some they've been there six, seven years. Yes. And then they would grab they would graduate with a general study degree. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I I am a witness, I know about that. They they enjoyed they 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 experienced the and, that. And, and, oh yeah. So, oh, yeah. so, so in your senior year, okay, you graduated. You now, you from New York, right? Right. So New York is known for Brooklyn. their cuisine. You feel what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So when you went to the HBCU college, did you did you go through food withdrawals back there? Actually, only when I used to go home because University of Maryland, you know, each school has they, you know, they rep the the the, the uh. The major that they rep, mm-hmm. and one of the majors was hotel restaurant management. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they would do all aspects, including chefs. Yes, mm-hmm. and the uh, one, the young lady that was my friend, my my friend friend, your, your friend friend, friend. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she was hotel restaurant management. Yes, so she broadened my horizon to everything because when mm-hmm. I first got down there. The only type of shrimp that I ate was fried shrimp. Mm-hmm. Right. But after being around her, she put me on to saute old bay. I was eating every kind of shrimp you can name but fried <laughs> shrimp. And, and then, you know, she, so, you know, it really, I, it really expanded me. That's why, I mean, I'm so thankful 
to my parents for that experience. I didn't want to go at first, but yeah, I'm I'm really thankful. It taught me a lot. So how'd you transition into the professional um, career of gospel music? Well, at that time, uh, I can be honest with you, I was a, I was done with singing. You know, I it was to the point of. When it came to gospel, I grew up in church, so I wasn't interested in gospel. Because, like, during that time, that's when first Kirk Franklin first came on the scene. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was on fire. Mm -hmm. So then I remember my one friend of mine, I was walking by, and I, like I said, my freshman year, my sophomore year, I did a play. I helped the lady. She just happened to be the English professor, too. Mm -hmm. So she and I, they got me in a place. I didn't do anything else. So the, the church, um, the gospel choir needed some help. So I actually went and played the drums for them to help them out and for the concert, the spring concert. Mm -hmm. And half of the material was Kirk Franklin, you know, material. So I was that much, you know, I had disassoci disassociated myself from gospel music so much that I, I didn't even know who Kurt Franklin was. Wow. So later that I was like, man, they singing all his songs. Right. So then on the quartet level, I grew up to it, but I, I was just like, that's not what I want to do. And then it didn't help. You know, I'm <laughs> 19, 18, 19 years old, and a bunch of my friends are now doing R&B. Wow. And, move, and moving. You know, my, to my guard brother who... Um, Produced a lot of my my stuff in the beginning. Spanky Williams, mm -hmm. he had became the lead singer of an R and B group, Men of Vision, that was signed to Sony. They was on Michael Jackson's late. Wow! So bad enough, I was going around with them sometime as the roadie. Then you had Casey and JoJo from Jodeci. Mm -hmm. I grew up with them, mm -hmm. and then you had uh, the guys off the movie Lean on Me. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Riff. I grew yep. up with them. <laughs> Then grew up with the guy Chauncey that was with Black Street, yeah. Teddy Riley. I grew up with um, Coco, who was the lead singer for SWV. Yes, and you know it was. I had a lot of like friends that was doing it, so I was like, man, I want to sing on uh, beat. Yes, so I didn't touch gospel at all. So what happened at my school? They didn't even know I went to church. I be honest with you, I was not living the life as a Christian. Well, you, were, you, you, <laughs> I, you, you was like. You said your heathen tree. He was tree. a heathen. Heathen yeah, tree. Heathen. <laughs> my life, my life was not shining. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but God, but God. Yeah. So then it would be one of those things because okay, my I had my best friend. He's been my best friend since I was four, and we actually met in church. And since then, we had went every school year together. So we was down there in college. So we knew how we was raised. So sometimes we would we would just be and, I, and then there was this good old sanctified church way down in the country. So they would have you know the van ministry yes, come yes, through sir. the kitchen. Yes, sir. So we followed the van. <laughs> you know we weren't we weren't getting on that van. Right, right, right. But we would, we we had cars, so we followed the van to the church. Right. So then. That's why you got to be careful of the light that you shine now when you when you got a, a position in church. Yes, sir. And, you know, whether you on a praise team yes. or whatever. Because now my other boy, he's from Harlem, but he is smart at it. So when we got to the church and then, you know, they started the service, it was two young ladies that was on the praise team. And my boy, he, you know, he's still feeling a little good from last night. Yes, mm -hmm. sir. And he looked up. He was like, hey, man, that chick was at the party now. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I was he was telling on her. All night, man. <laughs> so then as they started singing, and she up there, you know, singing with the right. praise team. Here we go. <laughs> He was like, man, <laughs> she was at that party last night, and, and she she was dropping that thing like it was hot. <laughs> yes, yes, they be doing that. They be doing that. I'm a witness. <laughs> so, that was some of my experiences. So right. now we get to our senior year, man, and uh, you know we was having a little communion, uh, but. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> we was um we was um we was having communion, yes, but we sir. were college students, so we ran out of you know communion, communion juice. Communion juice. Well, <laughs> yeah, Jesus wasn't there at that moment. Of course, so he he didn't he didn't multiply the wine for us. Right, so, so <laughs> we got mad, and then we heard a talent show was going on in the auditorium. He's gonna so raise we went buddy. over to we went over to the auditorium, and the last. We was at the end, and everybody in that in that thing was <clears throat> terrible. He, they was terrible in the talent show. So again, my best friend, who we've been around each other since we were four, right. he knew I could sing. Right. So then uh, he said, "Hey man, go and get go and get in this." Then they made an announcement. They said, "Do now remember the winner get a hundred and fifty dollars." And a, a a dinner certificate like for a lo a local right. restaurant. Yes. So my friend was like, man, go and get that money. That's the buddy. So uh <laughs> my other friend who's now we still tight, he's actually my accountant. Right. <laughs> so but he always had managerial skills. Right. So he looked at that, he was like, What are you gonna do? And my best friend was like, Keith could sing. And he was that all of them start dying laughing. <laughs> man, get out of here. He can't sing. So then he said, you for real? He said, I'll be right back. So he went backstage and talked to them and was like, he got me in as a last minute, you know, uh, a contestant. Right. And I I just went to the house band. I was like, man, what y'all know? And they was naming songs I didn't know. And then, they, then the last song, they said, man, we know My, My, My by Johnny Gill. Uh -oh. I was like, hit it. I said, put me in C. Quartet <laughs> <laughs> key. So, yeah. so I started behind the curtain. Right? right. I started singing from behind. But they didn't use my, he made up a name. <laughs> <laughs> Matter of fact, my manager gave, they, my, only my crew used to call me this, and, but I'm not going to tell y'all my, my old nickname. Come, come on, come on now, Keith. No. This share, no, this share with the you know I'll, I'll twenty thousand folks that listen. I'll come on, and find it. C -c come on, Keith. Just go, go and share it. We just with family and friends. All right, man. They used to call me Bushwick. Bushwick. All right. Because out of our whole crew, I was the shortest one. <laughs> so that's why my 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 skin is tough. Right. Because I done been called everything but a child of God. Right. Uh -huh. So now the Bushwick was short. They just cut off the bill part. Right. Uh -huh. So basically they're gonna tell me I used to look like Bushwick Bill from the <laughs> ghetto boys. <laughs> yeah. No dudes called me a midget, man. Right. <laughs> but you killed them, didn't you? Yeah, so I came out. So I sung the first verse from behind the crop, the curtain. So the crowd was like, oh, yeah, finally, somebody that can sing. It really sing. So when I came out, man, that next 15 seconds, the whole crowd started dying laughing. <laughs> they, they did not believe that was me singing. Right. They were like, man, that's a tape. Right. So as I kept singing, you know, uh, and then I wound up winning. Uh -huh. And what you do with the money? As soon as I got the money, man, I got back to my crew. My my other close friend as my manager, man, he took that money and they ran to the communion place. Yes, sir. <laughs> I, I, I figured as much. And the rest <laughs> is history. And they said, keep the party going. Right. <laughs> you, so, know, you know what? That story is so funny because I would, like I said, I went to a black college too. And um, you, Smokey Norfolk went to school with me. And um, and so you get a chance to see a lot of things where God brought them from. Oh yeah, and I ain't oh, yeah. tell I ain't telling stuff, but I'm just saying. And and um, everybody joined the talent show, and we were church singers to win money for stuff, whether it was clothes, mm -hmm. food, or communion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I, literally, when I became when after you know Chief One Boy became a name, and I had I came down there. To the Civic Center in concert, and I promise you, the first three rows 
was like the cafeteria staff, some people from the financial of different like uh, employees of the college that could not believe that was that they was like, Ooh, you you are a walking example <laughs> of the po- power of, of God. The Lord. <laughs> he could turn. We was like, when we seen that picture, we was like, that's that same uh, crazy boy. Now they used to call me New York. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. They was call me New. That was them niggas call me New York, and uh, man, well, I had some times at that school, and they sure didn't see this coming. Right, not being <laughs> that, that that was a testimony of what God could do. Oh uh, yeah. So, so we want to talk about the shift. You you, you don't you don't had your college days. Yes. You know, you and Sheree was being number ten. You know, the whole nine yards. <laughs> there, there he go again. You know, it, 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 that's a rumor. That's how rumors get started. And you get back. When did the shift come that you had to take it, take it back, and do what you were you were, we're doing? called to do? Okay, that's why. Then one of my favorite singers right now. I tell young, you know, young people, you want to make the Lord laugh. Tell him your plan. And then he executed his plans. Mm-hmm. So, like I told you, I was done with singing gospel. But, you know, I had my plan. I told my boys, Yo, I'm going to get out of school. I, I'm going back to New York. I'm going to get a job on Wall Street. I'm going to get me a next season pass because I love basketball. And I'm going to get me a Honda Accord. And I'm going to be straight. That was my first plan. Well, things ain't worked out like that. I got back to New York. Yes. I did get a job on Wall Street, but it was entry level. So you, <laughs> if you, if you did not, if you did part of the corporate world, you know what's up when you get an entry level job. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that was one. And then I made the phone call to Madison Square Garden and found out I had no idea that a season ticket, if you had Plan A which is the good games, 25000 Yep. Oh, Jesus. <clears throat> that was big. That was basically my yearly salary. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so wow. I had to settle for getting the Knicks channel on cable. <laughs> 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 but I did get the Honda Accord. Yeah. Okay. That was so good. I was working on Wall Street. For about uh, I was working on Wall Street about three years, and then I realized one day when my boss they they brought the cake in celebrating my boss' birthday, so he blew out the candles and he said, "Man, I'm I'm thankful." He gave a little speech and he said, "Man, I I ain't never thought I would see forty five, and I looked at him like forty five. Man, you look like you 70. <laughs> but you 45. <laughs> then it, it hit me that on in that world, a lot of the guys that's paid well mm-hmm. is overworked and well stressed. Yep. Mm-hmm. So I was just sitting there like, Lord, what 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 do you want me to do? And then I, you know, he started speaking to me. What was your first dream? I only, I didn't. I was the type. I never really had too many dreams. Uh, once I became a teenager, I'm pretty good in basketball. So, like a regular kid, I, I just thought I was going to be in the NBA. So when, but so but but my first dream was to be a professional gospel singer. But quartet, what I'm doing now. Wow. So I still wasn't interested. So my god brother, who was all my, you know, my um was my producer, but he he was doing R&B. So he called me one day and said, hey, man, take me to the record store because he ain't had no license. So I had to go and pick him up and take him to the store. <laughs> and then he went in the store, which was my, actually a friend of my dad's, and he came in and popped the CD on. And it was <laughs> Memphis One mm-hmm. from, the, from the Canton Spiritual. Oh, mm-hmm. Jesus. And I was already a fan of them from before that, back in the day. But when Memphis One came out, it just relit my interest and love for quartet music. Mm-hmm. 
So then I still didn't make any moves yet. And then I was in my at my family reunion. And they were down there that same night. And I found them. I found the school. It was in the middle of the woods, everything. I found the school. And what happened was, after that, it just, it got the, it got an interest. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, even though the, uh, Johnny Martin was my uh, godfather, but he had passed away by now. Mm -hmm. And I just got, the, you know, the, the Canton Spirituals, Harvey Watkins Jr. and the Canton Spirituals is what really brought my interest back. And then, then my own self, then, then stuff that dreams, then I started remembering as a little boy. I wasn't your normal kid. I was a prodigy kid. Like, by the time I was four, I was the church drum. Mm -hmm. So I had I had my own drum set. I used to be at home playing, but I wasn't the average kid. I'd take my drums down, put them on the bed, then be sitting there with some shades on, imagine I'm on the bus going to the next city. <laughs> That was my playtime. Mm -hmm. That's how I played. Mm -hmm. So, wow. Then I was the type. So I was sitting there as a young man, about twenty three. You know, I didn't have no children and nothing like that. And I always been the type. The what? I didn't want the what if mm -hmm. to right. to to just keep. So I, I literally saw myself fast forward to when I would be forty five, and looking back and saying. What I wonder what would have happened if I would have pursued my dream. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want I didn't want that to be stressing me to death. So I said I'm gonna try. Mm -hmm. So I tried it, and and God's been leading me ever since. Oh yes, He has. So in in the music business, you know, because uh, there's the music industry, music business, and then there's this church worship. Um, there's always the ups and the downs. Let's talk about. Uh, the up moments, and let's also talk about some of the down moments that you experienced in the music gospel music industry. Well, some of the up moments, I'm gonna be, I used to be like, <laughs> I ain't gonna be like Joe Lagon. That's what Joe Lagon used to do. He used to he used to give an interview, give you his resume, all at the same time while he on stage. <laughs> 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 but uh, I've had some things happen that I. You know, that I never thought would imagine. I, it was it was very touching for me. Uh, 2006, I got a chance to be in Nashville, Tennessee, and I got to see the whole entire gospel industry as far as writing and in the BMI. I won my song "Let Go, Let God." That was way. Ooh. It won most played song of the year. Wow. On the radio mm -hmm. from BM out of all BMI writers, so it was two people there myself and Kirk Carr. Kirk Carr won for um, Presence of the Lord is Here for you know when Byron Cage put it out, right? So, uh, and then but I got to start meeting uh, Gerald Crab, which is Crabtree's yeah. family father, he the one write all the songs. When I tell you that man just should have just had him put a seat on stage, because not only was he rap writing for the Crab family, he was writing for everybody else in the Christian market. Wow. So, you know, I learned a lot of things like that. And then another big one was um, out of nowhere, I used to see the commercial on TV and everything. The Make a Wish Foundation mm -hmm. contacted me. And it was a young man in Milwaukee. And they was granting him his wish, and that was his wish to meet me. Wow! Wow! So I, I was like, wow, "Wait a minute, what? Me?" So then, you know, the Lord had blessed me to be nominated a few times, but once I finally won a Stella, that was that was a dream because I, I remember as a young man watching the Stellas and you know dreaming. Wow, mm -hmm. uh, that that was one of my last, you know, things that I needed to see during that time to make me really my interest. Because I remember it was a year Harvey won, and man, that dude was so clean when he came on that. I was like, oh yeah, that's my mentor right there, right, right. <laughs> that right there, mm -hmm. right there. So my my main thing is uh, like, you know, you got a lot of guys. You got it take a man. You got to be a man. To you know, you need to have a mentor. Mm -hmm. That's some of the young people' problem. They yeah. always like, man, I'm changing the game. Come on, I I I will be myself. No, you can be yourself, but you need to have a mentor. Come on, man. Mm -hmm. 
That's good. So let me ask you this question. Uh, you are now uh, solidified as Keith Wonderboy uh, Johnson, uh, the legend. Um, so what's going on now? You know, where where are you residing? You know, do you got 4.9 kids? In this, I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> 15 kids. <laughs> you know, so, uh, tell us what you're doing. You pastor? What's going on with your name? No, nah, no. Nah. One thing, as far as that, my dad was, I, I thank God for my dad, man. My dad was real in everything. He never hid nothing from me. So he was, you know, so it was actually, like I said, I was a prodigy. So we had people when we was 16 and 20, you know, that was telling my father, hey, man, you need to put them on the road. They ready to be on the road. But my dad was like, uh-uh, because I already know. I know my son yes. and my nephews. If I send them out there, <laughs> oh, they going to give them, <laughs> they will have 19 uh, <laughs> 19 kids by the time they 19. <laughs> but uh, so, but he, we, he wouldn't allow it. And my dad, you know, he's always teach me about all the aspects of being a man, mm -hmm. all the aspects of being an artist on stage as well as off stage. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I never, you know, was in it right now. I'm not pastoring, but, you know, I've been ministering through music all my life. So, you know, and then right now you got to get adjusted to the the new norm. Right. And that's what I'm doing. I become an entrepreneur, follower in my dad's steps. I have my own record label. Wow. Uh, I got a radio show. I got a production. I've got a production company where we put the, the you know the whole for pandemic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we put the whole concert together for you. All I got. All you got to do is promote it. After that, mm -hmm. so. And then, you know, I just been doing different things. September 4th, uh, I came out in a movie. The name of the movie is Negative Exposure. Mm -hmm. It's on Vimeo, on app, on demand. Mm -hmm. uh, did a couple of guest appearances this year. Came out on uh, Ricky Dillett CD. Yes. I did a song with Ricky Dillett. I did a song at the beginning of the year. I did a song with the New York State Fellowship Choir which is under the leadership of Pastor David Wright, yeah. which is the son of Timothy Wright. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I dropped my own single, and I call it the Pandemic Suggestion. It's called Try Jesus. I said, you don't put your business all on social media. You don't try the rest. So now I try the best. Try Jesus. Wow. Oh, oh, I thought and, you, so that was, you wasn't the song that said, try Jesus and don't try me? No, no, that's my boy. That's Jabari John. Right. That's my boy. He know. <laughs> he always but starts I, I, I do, I do, you know, hey, I got to agree with that song because some people are trying. It's not, that killed me. Anybody that know me, they know I love a good laugh. Uh, that song had me on the floor. Amen. Right. And then uh, also, just some other stuff. Um, it's, a, it's a dream come true. So the last four or five years, I've closely worked with my mentor and my big brother. He's basically family now. Um, Harvey Watkins Jr. Can Spirituals. Wow. So I got a chance to work with him. Uh, we got a male chorus, male chorus classic coming out on his neck. His new CD is going to drop on Malico. It's called God Set. And it's featuring Harvey Watkins Jr., Doug Williams of the Wayne Brothers and Keith Wonderboy Johnson. Okay. Now, 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 now my last question I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna give this over to Robert Odeen. You know, um I, I wanna find out from you, and it, this is very serious, listen to me very closely. Do you all need a tambourinus? Because I represent one of the <laughs> baddest tambourinists. <laughs> In the country, yeah. you know, Robert Earl, yeah. show him your signature move. Show him. <laughs> That's a signature move. Okay. <laughs> Go wrong. Well, I, I get adjusted to the new norm, and yeah, man, these young guys, man, they kind of done replaced you. Oh, uh, with the instruments. With the, with, with the MPC, man. Yeah. Yo, I'm going to tell you the honest truth. I don't know where he's at. But it was a guy that used to work closely in Mississippi with Malico Records and Blackberry Records. Mm -hmm. and so he was on, oh, sorry. He was on 
uh, like a lot of Malico, Mississippi Mass, William Brothers, um, Can Spirituals. He was a percussionist named Rufus Mack. Man, I used to die laughing. With me being a, a, a beginning drummer, man, I used to be like, where is Rufus Mack, man? Y'all, y'all done... Y'all done sent Rufus Matt to the house, man. <laughs> Y'all got, nobody don't use no percussionists no more. <laughs> That's okay, because God going God gonna bring it back, because we gotta bring tamarines back to the church. That was our signature piece of yeah, the church man. church life. Oh yeah, now it's, it's real deal. I knew some choirs in New York, and it was this lady group, man. That lady used to beat that tamarine. <laughs> she used to be louder than the drum. <laughs> <laughs> she kept she kept the pain. Kept the speed. Back. Right. One of my one of my uh, bishops, man, they that covered me uh, from St. Luke Baptist Church, historic church, and he just passed away. Man, he had this lady in his church. That's what she do. She be in the band, and she had about four tamarines, some See? shake shakes. See, man, that that thing used to kill me, Doc. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now they give her a solo, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> and let her go for it. Now, how was it working with Ricky Diller? On that legendary song "Rooftop," wasn't that a Mighty Clouds of Joy song? Uh, yeah, that's a Mighty jo- Clouds of Joy classic. Yes, it, Ricky Ricky Dillard is one of those unforgettable souls, man. We've been we had, we've been friends behind the stage, and it's like it was just a pleasure because you know he's he's one of the best at what he do, man. Yes. He know how to control that choir. Mm-hmm. You always from where you know the band is gonna be right. Yes, and then to be honest, behind the stage. You know, I'm just a regular dude. I love to laugh. So I love hum- being around humble people. Mm-hmm. You know the Lord's blessing you, but you know how some people, they just get out of control. Yes, sir. And Ricky's never been like that, man. And when we see each other backstage at different events, you know, the, it'd be people literally just hanging around just to hear what we're saying because they know it's going to be multiple, multiple dr- of, um Multiple jokes, man. It'd right. be the funniest mm-hmm. thing. Right. And he is definitely one of the funniest cats in the gospel business <laughs> behind the scenes. And you are too. Well, I just try to be me. That's well, right. and, and that's the one thing that we we loved about you, yes. uh, Keith, when we met you at the Stella Awards. You you, you stopped, you, you ordered your food, you did an interview, and and we exchanged numbers, and we appreciate you, man. Yes. You know, since you talked about Ricky Dillon, I'm going to set it up. Uh, uh, and have that play. Uh, but could you set it up? Tell people where they can find you, how they can get connected with you. Uh, we got to get you out here to the West Coast as soon as Coco is over. Uh, but tell them how they can find you now, connect with you now, yeah, and then introduce the you, song. You can find me on uh, Instagram at Keith Wonderboy Johnson, Facebook at Keith Wonderboy Johnson, Twitter at Keith Wonderboy J. Or you can just even email me at Keith. Wonderboy Johnson at gmail.com. And man, uh, you can go there for my new single, Try any of my music, Timeless Music. Radio. You can just go to any digital outlet where they have music, put in Keith Wonderboy Johnson, and it'll pop up right there. And, uh, you know, so I just want to tell you this is the, the song with me and my good friend Ricky Dillard and New G. This is a classic. By the mighty clouds of joy, rooftop. And, and, and ladies and gentlemen, I brought him to San Diego. He don't remember, but I brought his group to San Diego to North Park Church on 54th years ago when he was doing a little California mini tour. Remember that? That's the thing. I was like, man, this really make you definitely want to be, you got to be saved. Because I felt, I felt closer to heaven or something. Because I ain't never experienced nothing. How it was two seasons. In one day. Yep. Mm-hmm. During the day, we had on shorts. I mean, we was about to pass out. Yes, sir. We went to the mall. We went to the mall and bought some shorts because it was so hot. Yep. Then the sun dropped, and we had to catch the mall before it closed. Yep. And people was coming to the show in mint. We was <laughs> like, man, it's time to go. We going to be sick as a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Keith Wonderboy, we just appreciate you. We're going to yes. play this cut right here by uh, Ricky Dillard. It is called uh, He's My Rooftop, Rooftop, featuring Keith Wonderboy Johnson, right here Thank on you. GOD Radio 1.com.